Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at Romberg integration and uh, in particular we are going to look at uh, how to obtain the initial estimates using Simpson's one-third rule and then use Romberg integration to obtain the most accurate solution. So we have this example we are asked to evaluate the integral from zero to one of one over one plus x dx, correct to four decimal places using Simpson's one third rule with three, five and nine ordinates. Hence, improve your estimates using Romberg integration. So when you look at uh, our integral, our a is zero, our b is one, and our f of x is 1 over 1 plus x. So I can write here, a is equals to 0, b is equals to 1, f of x is equals to 1 over 1 plus x. Now, we are using ordinates. Remember the relation between ordinates and the number of subdivisions. We said that when you talk of ordinates, is the same as the number of subdivisions plus one. N denotes the number of subdivisions. Also, I want us to recall the formula for Simpson's one-third rule. So you can write here, recall. The Simpson's rule, of course, the one-third rule, that... Uh, when you integrate from a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to h over 3 into f naught plus 2 f2 plus f4 plus so many of them plus fn minus 2 then plus uh, 4 into f1 plus f3 plus so many other terms up to fn minus 1. Then lastly, we have fn. So this is Simpson's one-third rule. So I'm going to call this ttn. That is the approximation at, or simply when you use n subdivisions. Now, let's start with the three ordinates. When we use three ordinates, what will you get as our approximation? So you're going to write here using three ordinates. Of course, I'm interested in finding the number of subdivisions for this case, so n is equals to 3 minus 1. Remember that uh, the number of subdivisions must always be 1 less than the number of ordinates. So in this case, our n will be 2. And so we can now use that to calculate the step size h, which is uh, b minus a over n. So our b, that is 1 minus 0 over 2. And so that is 0 0.5. So when the step size is 0 0.5, come up with a table of x versus f of x. Remember, we are starting from 0, and the step size is 0 0.5. So when x is 0, what will be our f of x? You substitute it here. We need f of 0. That will give us 1. Step size is 0 0.5, so we go to 0 0.5. When x is 0 0.5, what is f of 0 0.5? That will give you 0 0.667, 0 0.6667. And finally, when you add 0 0.5, you go to 1, and that will give you 0 0.5. So this is f naught, f1, 
F2. Now when you use uh, the Simpsons one-third rule, we are going to get T2 is equals to, that means T when N is 2. That is equals to H over 3 into F0 plus 4F1 plus F2. You know the value of F0, F1, and F2 from your uh, table. You can substitute into that formula, those values, and H is 0 0.5. Press that into your calculator. You will get 0 0.6945. So right here, 0 0.6945. That is the approximation or the approximate value of the integral when we use two subdivisions. Let us proceed to when we have now five ordinates. So you can write here using five ordinates. Ordinates. Let's calculate n. When we have five ordinates, our n will be five minus one. And that is 4. So you can as well calculate the step size. H is equals to B minus A over N. That is uh, 1 minus 0 over 4. And that's 0 0.25. So let's come up now with a table of X versus F of X. X, F of X. something like that. We start from zero, the result is one here. Go to uh, 0 0.25, that's our step size. And that will give us 0 0.889, 0 0.889. Go to 0 0.5, that will give you 0 0.6, seven. Go to 0 0.75, and that should give us a 0 0.5714. 0 0.5714. And finally, you go to 1, it will give you 0 0.5. Now, what is the, the estimate when n is 4? So you write here that. Uh, T4 is equals to, remember here, this is F0, F1, F2, F3, F4. So it will be H over 3 into F0 plus 2 F2 plus, uh, no, there's nothing there, just 2 F2 then plus 4 into F1 plus F3. Then lastly, the other ordinate is F4. Again, substitute the values of F0 all the way up to F4 in this formula, and now use H is equals to 0 0.25. When you do that, you need to get uh, 0 0.6933. 0 0.6933. So this is the approximate value of that integral when we use four subdivisions. And now finally, when we use nine ordinates, what will we get? So right, using nine ordinates. Let's calculate the value of n n is equals to 9 minus 1, and that is 8 subdivisions. With this, you can now calculate the step size, that is h is equals to b minus a over n, that is uh, 1 minus 0 over 8. 1 over 8 is the same as 0 0.125.
that's our new new step size let us use it to calculate so simply to come up with a table of x versus f of x so this will be our table x versus f of x it will be very long so we start from zero the result is one go to 0 0.125 the result is uh, 0 0.389 there's something i want us to take note of here when i was calculating this this gave me not the not 389 here but it gave me 0. Point eight that was the result that's a correction when we use five coordinates so proceed to 0 0.25 that is 0 0.8 the next is 0 0.375 that should give us 0 0.7273 followed by 0 0.5, which gave us 0 0.667, followed by 0 0.625, and that should give us 0 0.6154, 0 0.75, that is 0 0.5714, Then 0 0.875. That should give us 0 0.5 triple three. Three three three. And finally we go to one, which is 0 0.5. So now let's assign them uh, these notations. This F naught, F1, F2 f3 f4 f5 f6 f7 f8 so when you use the trapezoid not trapezoid but simpson's one third rule we'll now talk of t subscript eight that's when we have eight subdivisions it will be equal to h over three uh, times f naught plus 2, f2 plus f4 plus f6, then plus 4, f1 plus f3 plus f5 plus f7 plus the last one is f8. Substitute the values of those ordinates, f f naught all the way up to f8 in this formula. And remember that in this case now h is 0 0.125. So when you do that, you need to get your value as uh, 0 0.6932. So right here, 0 0.6932. So this is the approximate value of that integral when we use eight subdivisions. Remember, these approximate values, those are initial estimates. And so what I'll do to each of them is to give them superscripts of zero to mean initial estimates. So I'll start with the T2 at level zero, T4 at level 0, uh, then the other one is T8 at level 0. So they are initial estimates, but remember we have obtained them using Simpson's one-third rule. Now let's see how to improve our estimates using Romberg integration. So right here using Romberg. 
integration. Remember the iterative formula when we use Romberg integration. Let me write it down here. That the formula is uh, T to N, T to N at level M is equals to 4 raised to M plus 1 times T to N at level M minus 1 minus T N at level M minus 1 everything over 4 raised to m plus 1 minus 1. So that is the formula that is used when your initial estimates are provided by the Simpsons one-third rule. Remember, this iterative formula is not the same as the one we used in trapezoidal rule. When we talked of trapezoidal rule as initial estimates, then it was 4 raised to m, not m plus 1. Take note of that. Here it is 4 raised to m plus 1. But when the initial estimates are provided by this trapezoidal rule, you need to write 4 raised to m, not 4 raised to m plus 1. So that's the difference between when you use trapezoidal rule and when you use Simpson's one-third rule to provide the initial estimates. So let's now come up with a table of this form, our table, we need to list the number of subdivisions in one column, and then here, Tn at level 0. I'll have this horizontal line. Should be very long. And then the vertical line. Let's have it like this. So we we have uh, two subdivisions. What was our T2? That was 0 0.6945, 0 0.6945. When we, the next is uh, four subdivisions. That gave us 0 0.6933. And lastly, we had eight subdivisions which gave us 0 0.6932. So on the right-hand side of the vertical line, we'll write here T to N at level one. Now we use the iterative formula. This is how you're going to use it. Uh, we'll have here four raised to two. Remember M is one here. This is the value of m. I remember it is 4 raised to m plus 1. So it is raised to 2. Of the value here, that is 0 0.6933 minus this other value, 0 0.6945 over 4 raised to 2 minus 1. So write your answer, press that, and then write your answer. When you do that, you need to get 0 0.6932. 0 0.6932. Proceed. Here we'll have 4 raised to 2 times this value, which is uh, 0 minus the value above it, that is 0 0.6933 over 4 squared minus 1. Again, if you press that in your calculator, you need to get 0 0.6932. 0 0.6932. The other column will be T to N at level two, when M is two. So what will we have? It is four raised to M plus one. Remember M is two now. 
this is our new m. So when you add one, that will be three times this value, which is uh, 0 0.6932 minus this other value, 0 0.6932, everything over four s to three minus one. Again, press this in your calculator. You need to get uh, 0 0.6932. So what we have found here is the most accurate approximation of that integral. That is when you use Romberg integration. So you can now say that therefore, therefore, the integral from zero to one of one over one plus x dx is approximately equal to 0 0.6932. Remember this is correct to four decimal places. And when you use Romberg integration, of course the initial estimates are provided by the Simpsons one-third rule. Let's compare this with the exact solution or simply the exact uh, value of that integral. So you can just write here exact value of that integral. So that will be equal to, when you integrate this, you'll get lean, lean one plus x from zero to one, those are the limits of integration. When you substitute one, you get lean two. When you substitute zero, you get lean one. But lean one is zero, so the answer here is lean two. And what is lean two in your calculator? Let's press and see what you are going to get. In my calculator, I'm getting lean two as uh, 0 0.6931. 0 0.6931, uh, 4718. You see, it is uh, our approximate solution is very close to the exact solution. So that tells you that the Romberg integration process is much accurate than when you use Simpson's rules and even the trapezoidal rule. The proof of the iterative formula you can find in my PDF notes, the iterative formula for the Romberg integration. So thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Professor Francis Okech. When you go to the YouTube search, type Francis Okech or Prof Francis Okech and you will find me right there. Also, don't forget to comment, like, and share this video. When you meet next time, we look at more problems involving Romberg integration. Bye-bye.